Well, allow me to pray this morning. All right. So a topic that the Lord, I believe the Lord had put on my heart, a topic that Jesus spoke about more than any other topic in uh, as he preached as he, uh, in his earthly ministry. Uh, and that is the topic of hell. And this is a topic that most of us don't even hear anymore. Uh, preachers and teachers, apostles, prophets, the fivefold ministry doesn't preach about anymore. Uh, it's seemingly. But before I get into that, I want to show you something. I want to share my share this with you. Me, me one second. Go see. If he sleep, he do his way. See, if he sleep, he ain't got to endure the pale horse or escape the pale horse no more. You see, because when you're dead, you're done. That's right. That's it. No. Oh, I know. He told you, y'all like y'all wondering, is he going to hell? You ain't got nothing to do with that. No. Did he accept Jesus as his? See. Y'all have been sold a lie. Yeah. You've been, you been bamboozled. All of that stuff is a fairy tale. To so believe in hell means you have to believe in Santa Claus. I don't care how you cut it. Hell is an imaginary place. Come on, Pastor. And I was taught. That if anything that does not have an explanation must be imagination. <laughs> so that's why you can talk about a hell that you don't know nobody went to for a billion years. Ain't nobody ever came back and told you that they were hot. For a billion years, ain't nobody ever came back and told you that they up and yonder singing around in a choir. Pastor Taylor, and I got you back. Well, no, I and I didn't, come to, I didn't come for you to agree with me. I know I done made a lot of y'all salty, but I don't care. That's right. Yeah. Tip on that. I didn't come for you to agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So good, good. <clears throat> so that was a preacher. And you heard him say that if you believe in hell, um, to believe in hell is to believe in a fairy tale. That was a preacher of the gospel. He, I, obviously, he was at a funeral preaching. I don't know this man. I just woke up this morning, and I've heard this recording before. I just woke up this morning and with this, with this uh, word in my spirit. And then as I was sitting down behind the computer, that um, it had to be like two years ago when I seen that video. That video came to mind. Um, and the Lord asked me to, I believe the Lord asked me to play that. Because, and you hear the people in the background, right? They were celebrating what he was saying. But, and he, again, he said that it, to believe in hell is to believe in a fairy tale. Well, uh, I must disagree with that pastor or preacher. So, um, because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, talked about hell a lot, quite a bit. More than he talked about heaven. And so, so today, if you were to take a survey, if we were to take surveys in our neighborhood about life after death, majority of us would say, yes, there is life after death. There is a heaven. And majority of us would say, yes, we're going to heaven. It just, just, um, but very few people would subscribe to the biblical teaching of hell. Even people in the church. You just heard the video. All right. So, and people, people were saying, I heard one person said, Hey, that boy, no, he preaching. Uh, yeah, he's proclaiming. You can preach. You can preach the truth and you can preach a lie. Obviously we know according to the word of God, he was preaching a lie. So, <clears throat> so, um, but if you call yourself a Christian, you have one big problem. Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about anything else in the Bible. If you follow Jesus, you will also follow what he said about hell. What did Jesus say about hell? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to tell you. He does not only reference hell in the Bible. He described it in great detail. Listen to this right here. He said it was a place of torment. Luke 16, verse number 23. 
Luke 16, verse number 23. And in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus at his side. He, in Hades or hell, being in torment. And I want to say something about this particular uh, parable. Um, I don't think it was a parable. I think it was an actual story because in, when Jesus talked in parables and uh, as you relate reality to a story that people can relate to, he often you he often didn't use names but he, here in this particular parable he used names abraham and lazarus and then the rich man so this was an actual was an actual story of life and not a parable so watch this then he said it was a a a, a, a place of unquenchable fire here's what jesus said in mark 9 verse 43 says and if you if your hand causes you to sin cut it off it is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two hands to go into hell to the unquenchable fire and then he says it's a place where the worm does not die that's mark 9 and 48 it says like this where the worm dies not and the fire is not quenched notice he said he's saying this a lot the fire is not quenched in other words the fire is not going out then he said it's a place where people will gnash their teeth in anguish and regret every time that somebody said to them, come know the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch this. And that's in Matthew 13, verse number 42. And throw them into the fiery furnace in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Isn't that something? He says, and there's a place from where there is no return. This is a, this is a, y'all bear with me. This is a pretty long one here. It's, it's about Lazarus and um, uh, uh, the rich man again. So I wasn't going to read it, but I felt the need to, we need to go ahead and read this. His, uh, there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen who, who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus covered with sores who desired to be fed with, uh, with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom or Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he be lifted up his eyes. In hell, he being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out and he said, Father Abraham. So this man, he said, Father Abraham. So this man was a man of the covenant. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in the water to, to cool my Tongue, for I am anguished in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that in your lifetime, uh, in your lifetime, receive your good things, Lazarus, uh, in like manner, bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us, between you and I, uh, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able to. And none may cross from there to us. And he said, and he said, then I beg you, father, to send him to my father's house. where I have five brothers, uh, brothers, so that they may warn them, lest any, they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them and he said no father Abraham but if someone goes to them from the dead they will repent and he said to him if they do not hear Moses and the prophet prophets neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead so the the, the, the point I want to get to you is he says besides all this verse number 26 there is a great chasm fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able to so there's a place it says hell is a place of no return you can come in but you can't leave you can go into hell but you can't leave there's a thousand ways into hell roads into hell but there's no way out of it all right then he calls it he calls a place of hell uh, call, he calls hell a place of outer darkness matthew 25 verse number 30 it says this and cast the worthless servant into outer darkness in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth he says it over and over and over again but we have a tendency to just look past that as if it's not real as if jesus was just speaking just like you heard that pastor say 
We have made hell into a fairy tale. Here, Jesus is explicitly and clearly explaining it and teaching hell as a real place. And he compared it to Gehenna, Matthew 10, 28. Gehenna was a trash dump on the outside walls of Jerusalem where rubbish was burned and maggots and flies were, were uh, uh, um, proceeded through the rubbish. He, in other words, Jesus is like hell is an unquenchable fire. Hell is an unclean place. Hell, hell uh, is 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 a place of death. So Jesus talked about hell more than he talked about heaven, and even described it more vividly. So there is no denying that Jesus knew, believed, and warned about the absolute reality of hell. Now, for that preacher to go and say that hell is a fairy tale, he has been deceived. And the people that are preaching, that are cheering him on, has been deceived also. People don't want to believe the reality of hell because they don't want to believe that a great, good, loving, awesome father can cast people into hell. Now, watch this now. Why was hell created in the first place? If it is God's sincere desire that every one of us uh, come to know him, why did he create hell in the first place? Why make a place of judgment for humanity? Well, this is what the Bible teaches us. The Bible teaches us that God did not create hell as a judgment for humanity. God created hell for the punishment of the devil and his angels, not as a place for human beings to suffer. Jesus said this right here. Then he will say, then he will also say to those on his left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire fire prepared for the devil and his angels. The everlasting fire was prepared for the devil and his angel. It was not created as a place of judgment for human beings, but it was created as a place of judgment for, for Satan and for those who follow him in their it, him in their rebellion against God. The Bible says that now watch this. It was not created for human beings. It was not created for humanity. But here's the thing. If humanity rejects God, if humanity rejects the provision that God has made for salvation, then humanity will suffer the consequences of their rejection of Jesus Christ. And that is complete, total judgment. The judgment of God, the total, complete judgment of God is hell the the lake of fire that burns is never jesus said it is never quenched it never goes out and throughout eternity here's another thing we can't wrap our head around we can't wrap our head around the reality of etern eternity you can't wrap your head around your thinking around and accept the fact that if you go to hell you will be there forever you will be there forever and the torment will never cease. So we, we see, we, we are human beings who are trapped into time. So we, we are, we are creatures of time. And so we look at time. What time is it? Start and begin, start and begin and end. The day starts it, it progresses and then it ends. And that, that, that's how we see things. That's how, that's how we receive things. We see things as starting and ending. But, it, but the reality is, the truth is, eternity has no end. And we don't want to accept the fact and the truth of, if we go to hell, hell, uh, that it, it, we will be there for eternity. There will be no end of torment. Watch this. Hell was created as a place of judgment for Satan and for those who follow him in their rebellion against God. The Bible says that the devil and his angels will eventually be uh, sent to hell. Here's what the scripture says in Revelation 20, verse number 10. And the devil who deceived them, the devil who received, deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophets are. And there will be torment day and night forever and ever revelations 20 verse number 10 human beings who are created in god's image are not meant to spend eternity away from the presence of god 
The place God created for them is heaven. Jesus spoke of this place that God has prepared for those who trust him. Listen to what he says here in John 14, verse 2 and 3. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. There where I am, there you may be also. We were created by God to worship him and to praise him and to give him glory. And we were created by God to spend eternity with him. But if we reject the provisions that God has made for us to be saved, then we take on the judgment of God. Here's why, here's why that we shouldn't take on, we should not take on the judgment of God because Jesus has already done it. Jesus, God has judged sin on Jesus. He has already done it for us. And when we accept what his, his sacrifice on the cross, his substitution, when we accept the fact that he substituted his life for our life, and now he has given us, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He who knew no sin became sin, and God judged him, judged sin on him. Why? So that everyone could have an opportunity to come to God, to be restored to God. For God God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So the Bible says it is not God's will that any should perish, that also come to know who Jesus is. I paraphrase that scripture, but you know, you know what it is. So God has showed his love by sending his son to die for our sins, to take our punishment so that we can go to heaven and so that we can be in right relationship with God. David said, he said, in, in sin, I was born in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. He said, so when I was born, I had the judgment of God on me. I was the judgment of God was on me. But when I accepted Christ and took his and, and, and exchanged my sin for his righteousness, the judgment of God was satisfied on Christ. Now watch this. The, the, the judgment that I so deservingly deserved was satisfied on Christ. And when I accept Christ, I accept what he has done for my life. Watch this. Uh, the Bible speaks about a place of final judgment. Um, for those who do not believe in the salvation provided by Jesus Christ, this place is known as hell or the lake of fire. It is not a geographical place, but a state of existence. Jesus spoke of it as a, a place of eternal punishment. He says, and all these Matthew 25, the latter part uh, of verse 46, and all these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Jesus talked about hell, preached about hell more than anything else. Why? Because he wanted to warn people. If you go there, there is no way out of there. Except the fact, the truth that he died for you, except the truth that he gave his life for you, except the truth that he, he suffered the judgment of God for you. The Bible talks about uh, Moses. He, 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 uh, how then rather, rather than enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, he chose rather to suffer with, with, uh, uh, with the Israelites. In other words, rather than to stay in Egypt and enjoy the sins of Egypt, the, he said the passing pleasures of sin. And he, he said, I, I rather, I rather go out here and suffer with my people. So in other words, sin is pleasurable, but it is passing. So th that's what God wants us to know. It's yes, it's pleasurable to your flesh, but it is passing it will not last and why would you put, put so much emphasis in something that is not going to last that will it that will uh, have you uh that, that you will if you continue in that you will end up in a place that is everlasting 
So watch this right here. In the book of Revelation, Revelation, the apostle John wrote concerning the final judgment of the wicked. And he says this here in Revelation 20, verse 12 and 15. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to, according to their works by the things which were written in the books. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I remember a dream I had. It just came to me. I remember a dream I had a um, long time ago. Um, and I don't even know if I had if I had um, read through the whole Bible at that time. In the dream, uh, I saw I was standing at the gates of heaven. It looked, it looked like heaven to me. And because everything was just beautiful. And there were two angels, um, one on the left, one on each side of the gate. And one was standing behind a podium and he had a book. And um, and the one angel that that was on looked like he's on the right side of the gate as I was looking at him. And when I presented myself, he said he, he said to the other angel on the left side of the gate, he says, is his name in the book? But he didn't say it like that. He said with authority is his name in the book. I was and I was nervous. And the, the, the angel that had the book was uh, thumbed through the pages and he looked up at me and he says, yes, his name is in the book. And, and I woke up from the dream and then I remember reading this in Revelation. I was like, wow, this is truth. So the reality of final judgment is clearly taught in scripture. But the Bible also indicates that the people who go to hell do so because they have rejected God's provision for salvation. The Bible says that God does not want anyone to go to hell. I just, I just paraphrased that scripture a little while ago, but this is in 2 Peter 3 and 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that anyone should perish, but that all should come to repentance. All should come to repentance. So the Bible teaches us this, that... The reality of a final place of judgment for the wicked, the hell is. It teaches us that those who spend eternity uh, in hell, they chose to go there. They chose to go there. When you choose to reject Jesus, you choose to spend your life in hell. You choose to spend eternity in hell. When you choose to reject what Jesus did on the cross and as he gave his life for us all, what you're literally saying is, what you're literally saying is I can pay my own penalty for sin. And the penalty for sin is death, hell, and the grave. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It is God's desire for everyone to come to him by faith and receive the salvation that he offers. Father, thank you for this word this morning.